Good morning, Year 5. This week we're going to carry on looking at persuasive writing. Today's LO is I can magpie persuasive language from a text. So, what do we mean by magpie? Well, a magpie is a bird and they're known for stealing shiny things to make their nests. So when we say magpieing in English, it just means stealing good words from other texts that we can use in our own writing. We've done it lots before. Okay. So I just wanted to introduce one more persuasive feature that we didn't look at last week. It's something that you see lots in persuasive writing, and that is imperative verbs. OK, so imperative verbs are also known as, a.k.a. bossy verbs. Um, let's have a look at an example of one. Visit Yorkshire for the experience of a lifetime. Well, the imperative verb is just a verb where someone is telling you what to do. OK, so if a teacher tells you to stand over there, then um, stand over stand is the imperative verb, isn't it? So here the imperative verb is visit. OK, it's just telling you what to do. Visit Yorkshire for the experience of a lifetime. I'd like to look at these two here and see if you can uh, just pause the video and identify the imperative verbs here, please. OK, uh, we've got enjoy. So they're telling you to enjoy miles of endless stunning countryside and then discover, okay? So they all go at the beginning here, don't they? They're telling you to discover rivers, lakes, and majestic mountains. Okay, so we'll be on the lookout for imperative verbs today, as well as all the other features we looked at last week. Right, um, so today we're gonna to magpie words and phrases from other persuasive texts that can be used in our own writing. So we, next week, we'll be writing um, a persuasive text persuading somebody to visit Greece. So today we're going to read some texts and we're going to, they'll, they won't be about Greece, but they'll still be language that we could use in a text about visiting Greece. Does that make sense? So first you'll find the words and phrases that could be used in a text, persuading someone to visit Greece. And then I want you to identify what persuasive feature you have found. So we did that last week already, so hopefully you won't find it too tricky. And here is just a reminder of the features we were looking at last week. And I've also added imperative verbs there. Um... OK, so let's get started. I'm going to show you how to do this first one here and then I'll let you have a go at another one. Um, so this is an advert for people to go to Orlando in Florida, where there are lots of theme parks. Um, so we've got family deals, 300 pounds off. So there's, that's just sort of advertising language, isn't it? Perhaps it's the impossibly beautiful beaches of Miami and the year round sunshine or, of course, those world class theme parks. But anyone who visits is, I should say, is that, is captivated by Florida. This pocket of paradise is truly infectious. So what could we borrow there that would work in a text about Greece? Well, Greece is um, impossibly beautiful, isn't it? Um, I'll put dot, dot, dot. Now that, I'd say, is an example of, uh, I'd say it's exaggeration. so beautiful that it's in, impossible but Greece is a beautiful country so you could use that there couldn't you um, world class well world class um, is a bit of a weasel word I'd say um, it's a bit vague isn't it world class what, one of the best in the world something like that I'm not sure um, captivated if somebody is captivated then they are uh, I suppose they they can't stop looking at something. They're, they're in a trance almost. Um, I'd say that is emotive language. Okay, because it tells you that you will be captivated by the things you see there. Um, and then we've got pocket of paradise. Um, that's alliteration, isn't it? Okay. Um, but all of those are things that could be used in a text about Greece, aren't they? Um, Orlando is like a world-class candy shop. Named the theme park capital of the world, Orlando never fails to amaze. I like that. Never fails to amaze. Um, and I'd say that's probably more exaggeration, isn't it? There's, or even a cliche. It's one of those sort of overused phrase, isn't it? Never fails to amaze. So we've got two features at the same time there, isn't it? Um, 
with those hair raising coasters of well now hair raising is a great phrase but i wouldn't say hair raising is that's used to describe a roller coaster isn't it i don't think it's relevant to uh, a holiday to greece so we'll leave that one out and beyond kids step into the movies at universal orlando resort and golf fans are bowled over by its 170 plus world-class courses i think we'll leave it there i think we found enough from that bit there um so this is what you're going to be doing today so you've you write out the, um, the thing you found that could be used in a text about Greece and then in brackets write what kind of feature it is from this list here. Okay, I'd like to pause the video here and just have a go at these. You don't have to write this down, it's just a quick practice task and your written task will be coming later. So pause here and have a go at finding any of these features or other phrases that would be good in a text about Greece. Okay, you can unpause it now. So in Orlando, Florida, everyone believes in magic. Um, this is the kingdom and you are the royal family. With six Disney parks, two exciting nighttime entertainment districts, and over 20 Disney resort hotels. Um, I'm going to take that, but just there, over. Okay. Or I'll put with over. So for Greece, it could be with over 5,000 ancient sites to visit. Okay, you'll, something like that. Uh, I'd say that's weasel. Whoops. Weasel language again because it's very vague, isn't it? It's not being precise at all. Goodness me, I can't type here. Um, with over, it's very vague, isn't it? It's not really saying how much. Um, countless opportunities. Um, I'd say again, weasel language because it's vague. Saying something's countless, it's just saying a lot, isn't it? Okay. And I suppose it's exaggeration really as well, isn't it? Um, it's easy to see why. Um, not sure what that counts as, but it's just one of those phrases we can borrow. So if you can't think of what it is from this list here, don't worry. Just If you think it would work in a text about Greece, then just pinch it anyway. Um, the holiday of your dreams. Uh, I'd say that's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? It's just one of those phrases that we use in English quite a lot. It's a bit cheesy. Holiday of your dreams. And these dreams can come true. You could write that down as well, couldn't you? Uh, book now. Um, well, that is telling you to do something, isn't it? It's bossing you around. So that is an imperative verb. And it's also just a general language of advertising, isn't it? And then it's saying visit. So that's imperative as well. I'll leave that. Okay, um, I'd like to pause the video here and see what else you can find here. Okay, now that you've unpaused it, we will see what else we can borrow from here. Take your holiday to the next level. Um, we could borrow that, couldn't we? Take your holiday to the next level. And I'd say that's imperative isn't it it's bossing you it's telling you what to do take your holiday take it to the next level um with three amazing theme parks universal studios florida universal's islands of adventure and universal's volcano bay water theme park opening 2017 spectacular on-site hotels and more i like that spectacular um i suppose that's emotive i mean it's just a it's just a strong uh adjective really isn't it spectacular but that's something you could use in a text about Greece um, endless fun well exaggeration is it endless does it ever end I'm sure it does end exaggeration uh, it's probably weasel language as well isn't it saying something is endless um, for every member of the family book your Orlando flex ticket now to get the full experience so we've used that, we've looked at that already, haven't we? Book now to get the full experience. Um, but you could write that down later if you find something similar. Okay, so let's have a look at your task today. So, first you need to read the text about Paris and Alton Towers. So in a moment I'll show you a text about Paris and then another one about Alton Towers, which is a theme park in England. Then you need to find the persuasive words and phrases that could be used in a persuasive text about Greece, about visiting Greece. And then after the word or phrase, write in brackets what persuasive feature you have found. So that's just what we've done here, isn't it? Writing in brackets the feature, so the, the language you found and then what kind of feature it is. 
Um, and then that's it. But we're going to do it for two texts because they're not particularly long. I thought you could handle two today. So the first one is this one about visiting Paris. Now this has uh, this includes lots of ancient sites or old buildings. So there'll, there'll be some good language here that will be relevant to visiting Greece. So there's lots you can magpie, you can borrow here. Uh, so you can pause the video here to have a go at this task. And then there's a second text here about Alton Towers. So it's about a theme park. So there will be things that aren't relevant to a text about Greece, but there will be language that you could use. OK, uh, never want to leave. You could say that about Greece, couldn't you? Are you bored and fed up of visiting the same old places? So that is um, a rhetorical question, isn't it? So straight away, you can start with that, couldn't you? OK, so you can pause it on the video here, but I will also upload these two texts to uh, the class story and you can download them there if that's easier. Right. Uh, do the work in your book, please, and upload it to your portfolio. I look forward to seeing your work. Have a great day. Bye bye.